Welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in Acts chapter 24 and Paul is still bound, still in prison. He reaches to a, to, a, to a judge, his name is Felix and it's so funny because these Jews, they, 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 like we talked about yesterday, they just accuse Paul of some crazy things. Here's some things that they accuse him of. They accuse him of being a plague. <laughs> he says, this man is a plague, a creator of dissension among the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and we seized him, and wanted to judge him according to our law. That, by the way, is a complete lie. Um, but the commander, um, and they're like, yeah, but one of your guys is the one who like took him out of our hands. So we were, they're, they're, they're telling um, Felix, they're like, hey, we were going to take care of it, but you kind of, your people kind of got in the way. So now we're here. And it's so, it's important for us to understand. And I don't know, I, I don't know how much I've talked about this recently as we've gone through, as, as we've gone through Acts this time around, but Yesterday, I kind of gave an overview of, of Paul. I, I want to kind of spend some time today and give you guys an overview of the culture. Yesterday, we talked about the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and their religion and, and their need to hold on to their, to their religion and, and what they think is right and, and how that's completely different from Christianity, right? But, but, I don't know if I, I don't know when was the last time I mentioned this, and so if you're, uh, uh, if you have been watching for a while, then you you already know this. But if you haven't been watching for a while, here's some here's some cultural context I, I want to give you guys, um, and and we actually see this at at the very last verse because Paul ends up being imprisoned here for two years, two years. But thank God though, the good thing is that Paul actually had freedom. He was more of like a, it was kind of like house arrest, but. Paul had freedom. He can go around and he can do what he wanted to do. People could visit him and 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 back and forth. But so he had, you know, according to the Bible, it says um, in verse twenty three. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. So Paul is imprisoned, but it's not terrible. But he's like this for two years, and eventually Felix. Um, is, is, is succeeded by someone else. But the last verse says, but after two years, Portius Festus succeeded Felix and Felix wanting to do the Jews a favor left Paul bound. Hmm. The cultural climate of, of this time is something that is actually... How do I say? The cultural climate is not very different from the rest of history moving forward. And here's what I mean by that is that there's one of the great things, you know, we or I, and hopefully, and maybe you or not, but most of you, most of you, we live in the United States of America where we have a, a clear separation. We have a clear separation of church and state, church and state. Yes, church and state. <laughs> Sorry, I, I said church and state and my brain heard something else. Anyways, we have we have a separation so that so that the so that the government can intrude, can influence, can dictate religion. We have a freedom of religion. It's embedded in our constitution. This right here is one of the reasons why the founding fathers, our founding fathers, did this. Now, it's not because of this specific reason with Paul and Felix, but for this reason, though, this cultural reason that, 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 that our country was facing um, in, 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 in England and in, and, and in surrounding regions. A lot of people came to the colonies because they wanted religious freedom. They wanted that separation. They wanted that separation from government and, and, and the church. They didn't have that in England. It, it, it was the government and politics were very much the same. They were very entwined, interconnected. In this, in this scenario, it's the same. Politics, 
and the church were very much entwined. And we see that it says um, Felix wanting to do the Jews a favor. We see this with Pontius Pilate. When, when Jesus was on trial, Pontius Pilate, we see it. Pontius Pilate, he wanted to release Jesus. But he was afraid because he knew if I do something that upsets, that upsets the established religion, that upsets the Jews, then they're going to revolt. And if they revolt, then I'm in trouble. Then Rome is going to see me, the Roman government is going to see me as incapable. And so I'm going to do things to appease the people so that because if they're happy, then I get to keep my job. If, if, if I do things to, to appease them, then I get reelected. <laughs> that, that, that would be today's translation, right? And, and um, man, there's, there's, a few things, there's a few things I want to say, but we'll see where the Holy Spirit leads. But that is a, that, that is a political, the cultural climate that Jesus lived through. And now these apostles and these disciples are, are, are living through. Living, yeah, living through because they were they the 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 governors of that time they wanted to appease the Jews because the Jews being many and having this established religion they had a lot of control where they can say you know what we're gonna revolt we're gonna come against you we're gonna riot and if Rome sees that you can't control your area of government then you're then it's off with your head. But here's but here's the thing. But Fest, but sorry, not Festus. He's after Felix. Something interesting. Something really interesting happens here, um, and I didn't realize it until I, I read this. Is that Felix? Keep, Felix keeps Felix keeps Paul in prison, but he doesn't kill him. And ultimately, that's what the Jews want. Jews want him. Jew, the Jews want Paul killed at the very least imprisoned Paul even though he's imprisoned he's still free to roam to roam around he's still free to preach and write letters and have visitors so even though Paul is restrained to a geographical area he's not restrained in the preaching of the gospel but Festus keeps him in prison to kind of keep the Jews at bay but why doesn't Felix, did I, did I say Festus again? I don't know. But why does Felix not kill Paul? We see it right here, actually. In verse 22, um, this is after Paul testifies. He gives his own testimony. He talks about, Paul testifies before Felix. Verse 22, but when Felix heard these things, having a more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, when, Ly when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I'll make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have um, liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. Verse 24, and after some days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And this is what Paul heard, the faith in Christ. And then verse 20, 25, now he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. Felix was afraid. And answered, go away for now, when I have a convenient time, I will call for you. So now, next verse, we know that Felix really, he just wanted some money. But there's a fear there that keeps him, that I, I think, I believe from reading this, keeps him from doing any harm to Paul. Where he sees, where he's hearing about the faith in Jesus. He's hearing about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. I think Paul's, Paul speaking the gospel, Paul speaking the truth, really caused Felix to evaluate his life and say, hmm, I should probably leave this man alone, but I'm going to keep him in prison though so that I can keep my job. But I'm not going to kill him because what he's saying is true. Does that make sense? So that's what I think is happening in this, in, in, in this last portion of scripture. But we see, when, and we see this a few times uh, with, the, with the apostles and with the disciples is that 
they they're they're not they're not only fighting this old religion with the Sadducees and Pharisees, but they're also fighting against they're also fighting or having to come against the government because they're intertwined with the religious with with the with the religion with the religious people with the Jews at that time. So I feel like that's very similar for us. And here and, and here's what I mean by that is that hmm, how do I say this? We we are coming we are going against this world's culture. And whether you know it or not, this world has its own religion that says, you know, do whatever you want, do whatever you feel. You can be what you want, you can do what you want. It's all about you. And 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 whatever makes you feel good. Like that is the religion of this culture is do whatever you want. And we as Christians say talk about self-control. We talk about righteousness and we talk about the judgment to come. We the Christianity is countercultural. But here's the thing, culture and our government are very much the same. And we see that with certain ideas, certain beliefs that are now being implemented and taught in our elementary schools, in our middle schools, in our high schools. I literally, this week, I just received some, curric some curriculum about how love is love. Church, love is not love. Love is God. Because love comes from God. And if you don't know God, then you can't love. That's what the Bible says, church. So without getting too, without speaking too much about it, here's what I want to say. Christianity is countercultural. But culture and government these days are very close together. And so if government starts to come after the churches, we have to stand up and be the people who preach, who speak the truth. And what are we speaking? Self-control, righteousness. And the judgment that's, that's to come. Amen? Church, this isn't a sad thing. This isn't a scary thing. This is what we're called to do. This is what we've, this is what we've been seeing in the book of Acts. is people standing up for righteousness, preaching the gospel of Christ. And sometimes, all the time maybe, suffering persecution for it. But it is our duty to be obedient to the Spirit. It is our duty to be a voice, to be an ambassador for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Help us to be encouraged, God. Help us to be encouraged to be obedient to your will, God, and to speak up when you tell us to speak up. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, if you haven't already, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post a video. Also, in our comment section, there's a couple of links. One is if you want to give to Daily Hope. Thank you guys so much for your generosity. Um, if you guys are, if you guys want to become a monthly supporter of Daily Hope, also our reading plans there so you can follow along as we finish up these last few chapters of Acts. And lastly, I want to know what was your takeaway? What did you get out of this chapter? Put that in the comment section because I love reading those. Those are encouraging to me. Those are your comments are like little daily hopes to me. Amen. So whatever the Holy Spirit spoke to you or what your favorite part of this chapter was, put that in the comment section because I love reading those. And before I let you go today, people are our hearts. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorites. And Jesus is our Lord. We'll see you tomorrow for Acts chapter 25.